Hey everyone, how are you doing? Good. Good. So I know this is going to be a stupid question, but how many of you guys are developing roguelikes? Put up your hand. All right, cool. Keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. So how many of you have run into problems of scope? Everyone, yeah, exactly, right? So can, you can imagine being a developer in your spare time. I work full time, so I probably spend maybe two to three hours a day on developing my game. Anyways, so who is this handsome young man before you? That is a question. I'm Matt Ritchie. I'm 25 years old. I'm a hobby game developer from British Columbia, Canada, so it was obviously a really long trip, you know, dog sled, all that stuff. It's really warm here. <laughs> I'm currently working on the roguelike Axu, which is, uh, uh, oh, sorry, but also, sorry, I prepared these slides last night. <laughs> also, hi, my name is Matt Ritchie, and I'm a scope addict. Hi. Who else? Who else? Right? Okay, cool. So what is Axu? Axu is a science fantasy open world roguelike that's set on a prison colony planet. You are sent there as an exile, and you have done some crime, or maybe you haven't, I don't know. That's up to you. Uh, there's a persistent procedural open world, static and randomized maps, yada, yada, yada. And it has over four years of part-time development. It's currently available for download and itch, and it's about 60% done, so I'm just hitting that hump there. Uh, it's heavily influenced by Caves of Cud, Ivan, Adam, and Alona. Those are my four favorite roguelikes, and they're amazing. All right, so this is the character selection screen where you can see the felony up at the top left corner there. And yeah, there's a bunch of attributes and stuff. It, it, with that previous talk about character creation screens, this one here is awful. Don't do this. <laughs> Don't do this, it's terrible. Um, this is another screenshot of a predefined map. Um, I just shown off a little bit here. Uh, underground, you can see that the uh, slime matzer stripes me, strikes me in the leg with their bone saw for two damage. So there's a limbic system involved, and yeah. And this is the another character screen here, where it shows all the track limbs, the trace proficiencies, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and the world map. So. There's a 200 by 200 uh, grid of tiles that makes up the world map, and each one of these ones can be entered for a 45 by 30 um, uh, grid of local map tiles. So you can see how the scope gets out of hand here. <laughs> so that's why it's taken me four years. But first of all, let's talk about my previous uh, learning experiences. And I've got two here. Rite of Passage was the very first game that I started working on in Unity, which is the engine I'm using. And um, yeah, it failed spectacularly. It took up multiple years, and it changed from the top left there. You can see it was a survival game, and then it changed to like a roguelite, like uh, Binding of Isaac. It, it was just a mess. And then I started working with two artists, which is a big mistake again, on Boku Forest. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> on Boku Forest, which was a 3D platformer. And you can see my programmer art in there because the artist never did anything. And of course, Axu in itself never went so well. You can see the 100% disk usage, which is Windows 10, brought to you by. And this was the original prototype that I uh, came up with when coming up with the main game loop. And combine that with Pearl and Noise, and you have Axu, which started off looking like this. And now, sorry, and now looks like this, and it's very beautiful, I think. So what drives you to make games? Is it creativity? Is it money? Is it the challenge? Or is it that you love learning? These are very, very important to maintaining motivation. You need to know why you're making your game and who you're making your game for. And what made you put down your last project? Was it lack of time, which is a huge constraint for me working my spare time? You know, is it lack of motivation? Your idea didn't work out, scope creep, et cetera, et cetera. Scope is one of those things that I, it, it, it's, it's my nemesis. <laughs> I create these large, large games because I never think I'm gonna complete them. So my challenge with Axu is to make a large game and do it in my spare time. But you have to always adhere to the core of the game. Always. If it doesn't add to the core of the game, get rid of it. 
and design. Some ways that I've found are uh, very useful when making a large project. You want to make it easy to modify and add systems. So you want to start out with something maybe like a mod system. That's what I've done in my game. So the modders have the tools that I have as well. Um, you build from the ground up, layer by layer. You don't build a tall tower and have it fall over. You want to build a pyramid. That's why that's there. And this one's really important. You want to add something new every day that you're working on it, even if it's small. If you're tweaking, you're not getting anything done. You're pre-optimizing and it's bad. You're going to replace it anyways, who cares? If so, something doesn't add to the core, throw it out. Do not start all over again because you can do it better faster. This is another pitfall that I see a lot of people fall into. They will start a project and then they will throw it away because, oh, I've learned so much, I could do it so much better next time. Don't do this. Work with what you have, keep it malleable, and you will be fine, <laughs> I promise. Don't treat any roguelike interpretation as gospel. This is kind of what Slashy was talking about. Um, and just make a game. You don't have to make it a roguelike. It can be inspired by roguelikes, but don't make it a roguelike just because you want to make a roguelike. Make it a game, make it fun, put your own spin on it, and then it'll be entertaining. And have fun yourself. Even just one hour can make a difference. One hour a day, that's not that big of a commitment. That's probably how much time you spend watching TV. You know, it's, it's not that big of a commitment to make. Anyways, that was my very short talk. Thank you very much. Any questions? Yes. Oh, the internet's good. Okay. Um, which of those four motivations drives you the most? Uh, we'll, go. we'll go back to that. For me, it's a combination of the creativity, the challenge, and the learning. <laughs> because, let's be honest, I'm not going to make any money. I, I have donations open, and I've made $400 in two years. You know, I, I mean, that's pretty good, right? That's pretty good. But <laughs> it, it's not going to keep me fed. How do you, uh, how do you organize uh, and decide what you work on for that one hour each day? Oh, well, that's, that's kind of an interesting question. Um, well, usually, since I'm doing the majority of the art, I have an artist that intermittently comes when he's not busy and does over some of the tiles. So I'll work on art one day, and maybe I'll work on like some system code, maybe I'll work on making some new enemies. You wanna diversify and keep yourself working on something new so it's always fresh. You don't wanna keep yourself stuck in a rut. Anyone else? Um, 